was really defecating and you put her your your Johnson in her mouth. <laughs> Dang, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> We're going to be talking if about some were, jo- We're going to have to go to Johnson's in a minute. We'll, we'll be on Johnson shortly. We'll be on Johnson's real shortly. That should have been the next one. It should have. Fuck it. we going to it. <laughs> These niggas had the internet in a frenzy this week. <laughs> and not for good reason. And not for good reason. to nightmare radio episode 79 we are in the building take three but we still got smiles on our face ish you okay today i'm i'm here (laughs) y'all well listen we thank you so much for clicking on our podcast because we know you could have been at any other podcast but you chose this one yes Shout out to us. We've been doing big things this week, working hard. Yes, living working large. hard. Yes. Shout out to uh, Yoski. At the top of the week, we got a chance to be in the building for his album release party. Sound like myself, baby. I'm it so was glad amazing. we was. I'm so glad the parent. I'm so glad the grandparents was able to do what they needed yes. to do that night. Shout, shout out to out y'all. To That's, all of the village. Yes. Yeah, shout out to the village because we was in the building. Yes. And it was you, good. So many people, everybody that that was in the building that was a person to be talking to has already been graced, you know, the show. So yes. kudos to us for being in the right places in the right spaces at the right time. With the right people. Hello. So shout out to us. Yes. Um, it's been a great, it, that was that was great. Okay, let's get straight into the culture <laughs> list. We're about to get right into the wins and L's for the culture this week. It's the culture list on Nightmare Radio. First up on the list, we have Kevin Hart and Charlemagne the God. They have inked a new deal with Audible. Uh, The two have a company, SBH. It is their own audio production company where they will be creating a series of books that will be released exclusively on Amazon's platform, Audible. And not not actually books. It's actually like audio series. Right, audio series, like podcasts, kind of. Like a It's Your World. Yeah, yeah. From Tom Joyner Show. Yeah, like that. Yes. Um, So it's the first one that they're releasing is Finding Tamika. Um, and it's, it covers like how media doesn't really do much to bring hot, to bring light to the cold cases that's going on that are, that are surrounding black women specifically, because we still waiting on our good sis to get some justice Mm. over there. Mm. Uh, The, the, one of the producers is Erica Alexander from, um, you know, Maxine Shaw, attorney at law. Yeah. She's producing that series. They got like five more in the gamut coming up. So that's what's up. But we can be looking forward to this coming out March 2022. Yes. Okay. Next up, we would not, I would not be who I'm supposed to be if we did not acknowledge the late Whitney Houston. Yesterday made 10 years since she passed in 2012. And um, 10 years later, after her death, the singer, the singer's estate sees quadruple growth in earnings. So, um, pretty much thanks to loyal fans like me and also a really great business venture. Um, the renewed focus, the renewed focus on Whitney Houston's music and her legacy became apparent as soon as primary wave partnered with her estate in 2019 and, um, upcoming because of this partnership this year, there's going to be a, I want to dance with somebody movie. That's actually going to be executive produced by Clive Davis, an adaption of the movie on Broadway two unreleased albums and a there's talks of a Las Vegas residency show. Um, and I don't know exactly how they're going to do that because of course she's, you know, dead or posthumous. I know a few years ago they were entertaining the idea of having a virtual or holographic Tupac on stage. They need to let Whitney rest in peace. Child, they making that money work overtime. Pat Houston, we see you, but you know what? Ooh, Kudos to the estate for reigniting her legacy and, I can't wait to see I Wanna Dance with somebody. Next. Ooh, next. So we <laughs> know that tomorrow is the Super Bowl. Yes. 56, the Cincinnati Bengals will take on the L.A. Rams in L.A. Mm-hmm. It's a lot going on in L.A. We're not talking about Jonathan today. So y'all can uh, refu- you know, refer back to 
the shade room for that. <laughs> um, but everyone is definitely looking forward to Mary J. Blige, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Eminem, and Kend- Kendrick Lamar perform tomorrow during halftime. Well, it was revealed that Mary J. Blige did not accept a check for this performance. You know, nobody gets paid for the Super Bowl performances. I they- don't think that's true. I think they definitely paid Beyonce. I think they definitely paid. They probably, I mean, Beyonce probably brokered a deal because they definitely paid Katy Perry. But no, that usually it's it's not a it's not a it's not a it's kind of like a, a known thing. Like usually the Super Bowl performance is a free thing because the opportunities that come after it, you know, are so invaluable. Which is really what she said in the interview about it. And this is her second time going to the Super Bowl. We need to do a further research on that. Because I feel like Katy Perry got paid. No, I I, ch- I checked it out. Yeah, um, it's it's the investment of doing the Super Bowl, you know, the largest day in, in sports, and then the biggest day for advertisement. Like, for example, Beyonce did the Super Bowl, and right after her performance, she announced that world tour. Okay. Her sales, the, 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 it was so perfectly timed that the sales from the world tour, and you know what? Me and my best friend had, had business church this morning. Shout out to Kima because she put me on some, on some real tea about Beyonce and how she makes her money. So when she did the Super Bowl, she announced the world tour. The tickets went on sale. She sold out within the first 48 hours, U.S. and U.K., and so the amount of money that she would have charged for the Super Bowl, she had gotten back within 48 hours of her performance to do it. But let me ask you this. Do you think Beyonce would have made that money in 48 hours without the Super Bowl? Probably so. Did you know? Well, we we taken. What I was going to say was Coachella, when she accepted the deal for Coachella, it was much lower than what she usually did. You know what she did? What? She she said, OK, I'll take Coachella. Maybe they offered her uh, 12 million. Right. Which is. But that's when she made the the Netflix series and all of those other things off of that performance. Right. She was able to make more from that performance. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. We are in the field. Mm-hmm. We are grown. Mm-hmm. Are you taking opportunities? How do you take opportunities versus like being paid for it and not being paid for it? It depends on if I can leverage the opportunity. If I'm not getting a check for an opportunity, but the people that are involved, the audience that I'm going to be exposed to, the new room, the new tables that I'm going to have the opportunity to sit at, I'm going to damn sure make sure I work hard so that the next opportunity will be paid. Heard. You heard, know? heard. Okay. We'll see. I don't know. Depending on what it is, you're going to have to pay me. For sure. For things that I've been doing for a long time, you know what I'm saying, that I'm, that I'm very skilled in. But also, at the same time, like I'm kind of sort of in a space where even if I wasn't getting paid for it, I would still want to do, I would still want to be a culture commentator. I would still want to help Establish telling black stories. Yeah, yeah, but you. Gotta, I, you I do want to get a check. We want to be paid. We want to be paid. <laughs> we want to be paid. <laughs> anyway, so what's going on with Snoop Dogg? I know he's performing as well, but he just acquired Death Row. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Snoop. Um, of course, Death Row founded in 1990. It is the catalyst for the launch of his career. He left Death Row in, in 1998. Okay. Um, but the return back to Death Row is is one that's definitely like welcome and revered, and he's got a lot of positivity for the future of the records but now we transitioning into the l's mm. because this week oh and he has a new album so he announced his he announced uh acquiring death row on wednesday super bowl is on sunday and his new album drops on monday mary j blige's new album dropped yesterday too so everybody yes is, yes know, yes so i get why mary did that you right, know right. monet we get it Mon- and, and she just closed up an amazing crazy ass season, season on. of ghosts Woo. baby i'm too I, I believe monet she, i mean she is playing that role she monet do too much she does do too much and she crazy as hell but anyway snoop dogg under fire because after we had those three big wins last week for snoop dogg well he got hit with another sexual assault allegation this is not the first time this is definitely not the first time for Snoop. But why is it that now that he's bought death row, now this is his goddamn death sentence? This is his exile. This is his exodus. I mean, this is not the, th- the first. He had a, so basically a former dancer is saying that he and uh, Don Magic Wand, his partner, mm-hmm. um, forced oral sex on on her, upon her um, after a night of partying and she asked to be taken home and they, you know, it happened in 2013, allegedly. Allegedly, and it's, it is ironic that she's coming forward today. Now it let me, is. Now let me. Oh, and then After, two, before the Super Bowl, and in 2005, in 2005, a makeup artist also had same and similar allegations. What happened to those? And in 1996, remember he served jail time. 
Was it for those allegations? No, he had another rape charge um, at the very beginning of his career where he went to jail. He was convicted of that? I think he got off on a technicality similar to what happened with um, Bill Cosby. And so when Bill Cosby got off, uh, Snoop Dogg made, you know, those statements as well. So that also sparked the year. So now I love Uncle Snoop, right? We got three incidents that have been t- brought to attention over at, at different periods of our life. It's 1990s, early 2000s, and now today, right? Well, or late, you know, mid-10s. It's today. But but yeah, it's, now, it, but it's, it's coming up today, right? Well, that is 10 years ago. It is 10 years ago. Now, let me ask you this. If you had a friend who had been sexually mistreated mm-hmm. and it happened in 2008 or in 2012 and she was still toiling about it, what what kind of advice would you give her? No comment. Okay. No comment. Boom. I have no comment on that. I'm not saying nothing. I'm not. I don't have no comment. Cause that's, I don't know. That's like, tough. I don't know. I would. I don't know. No comment. I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> first thing, I don't, honestly, the first thing I'm gonna ask is why did you wait so long? I'm not gonna lie. But if she has solid concrete evidence like rape kid but if, things I mean, like that but a rape kid from that from from an incident that happened 10 years prior but they keep them things but what if she didn't acknowledge or or, or put through it too so the girl that that's that's following the complaint says that she obliged out of fear because she's she was aware of of snoop dogg's previous criminal history and his rape allegations and he's also had you know lots of allegations said allegedly okay said let me say him. this let me say this let me say this let me say this ladies let's end it like this all right because i don't want to get into the what ifs and all this other stuff like that mm-hmm. right like let's just put it like this ladies if you find yourself com- in a compromising position where you're uncomfortable and you want to be down for it for the moment and you want to play it off and so that you can get through it right because i know that that's what that's what ladies do that's what she said she did right go tell on their ass the next day period <laughs> Don't let that shit linger yeah. for long because yeah. then you put people in a position to to have the mindset of, well, why the fuck she waits so long? I hate that. Is it true? Is that true? Did that really happen? I hate and that. And now your credibility is like 50% because you have to look at all the optics of the situation. I hate that. Don't that's let that's the optics against be against you. Always stand 10 toes down on whatever the hell is going on. And also Period. men, because see, in, in situations like this, we implicate women as the persons that are responsible. You know, like, well, if this this wouldn't have happened to me if I didn't do this. No, Nick, Nick men, men. Because I was about to say the N-word on it. Yeah. It's, it's a man now, thing. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. Like, this wouldn't have happened if I didn't do this. I'm saying if you are in that situation, you need to tell. That's basically yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, You need to tell immediately. Immediately. And That's all I'm saying. And men, situations. if she was really defecating and you put her your your johnson in her mouth <laughs> dang i probably shouldn't have said that we're gonna be talking if about some were, jo- we gonna have to go to johnson's in a minute we'll, we'll be on johnson's shortly we'll be on johnson's real shortly that should have been the next one it should have fuck it we going to it <laughs> these niggas had the internet in a frenzy this week <laughs> and not for good reason and not for good reason first off nelly popped it off with his accidental non-close friends blowjob video and the video was underwhelming at least very at best. at best underwhelming underwhelming ladies ladies maybe he cut it off because she was finna get to it and it was gonna grow and it was gonna ooh. ooh. i'm not i am not penis shaming i'm not I'm don't not. penis shame because they definitely penis shame fizz now it the did, mushroom it did give mushroom but it's just like a little lighter at the top then the bottom i've seen some discoloration before and that's all it was and maybe he was no 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 you know what he was done because he was done in the camera is this the same mushroom that april everybody Bonice, was, no this amanda is the, this is the same mushroom from seventh grade now you're only 16 what i need with the wire we can walk through the bar while i hold your hands <laughs> you can hang on the job i'm gonna need I do it. Pr- producer like each i need ride. you to put some little some little some, uh forget. b2k under this <laughs> I'm gonna right need for you to tell your friends little fizz is in. Got you know by the way that I lit my lips. Oh wow. <laughs> well, you know, the the Ooh, the internet's went in a frenzy. Listen, I don't the the fizz video I didn't mind. Okay. You I don't I didn't mind. I wanna, okay. I didn't mind. I guess that's a new thing, like 
sending watch, those types of videos. But that leaked from his OnlyFans. Exactly. So and that means y'all hoes been paying to see that shit. Right. So why y'all putting it out? That shit probably old. Yeah, and it just it just seems like really timely. It just seemed like, time, yeah, time to do it. But this Isaiah Rashad. Okay, so here's the tea on Isaiah Rashad. Before this week, nobody knew, well, the public didn't know that he was pushing P. <laughs> I had to say it. <laughs> Ooh. I'm done. Oh, that was not right. Is that what pushing PB? I told you. I told you that that was one of the that that prior to gonna rebirth in the the term. Mm-hmm. You know what? We are not even. <laughs> no, t- okay, but Isaiah Rashad been pushing P with a lot of P's. Yeah, and, and he was and doing while it while watching P while watching P get pound. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah this is horrible but this does bring us to the next point i don't know how this got leaked but he yeah. is signed to top dog entertainment and a, and word on the street is that he is scissors ex-boyfriend <laughs> and if you wonder if i hate, hate you, you i do I'm just saying, and what? I think that the social media was a lot, like the internet's were a lot more forgiving to him because if he, this is like almost like he a was out. outed, yeah. Right. But and at this the same is in his time, personal life, you know what I'm saying? And he, he was been, being a wild but boy. He been, but is he undercover? Is he an undercover brother? Well, but you know what? That brings me. But that that's what Nikki was talking to Soldier Boy about on live, talking about there's a lot of undercover brothers in the industry. Yeah, it certainly is. You talking about Nicki Minaj? Yeah, she up on the list next. She is. Yeah. Cute transition. Very cute. Well, this week Nicki Minaj is not necessarily in the hot seat. Okay. It's really the it's really the barbs that that kind of sort of took took it and went. And I'm not even gonna say it's the barbs because I don't think that the barbs would do it. But let's get straight into it. Non blacks are infiltrated a celebration hosted by Nicki Minaj last week for Black TikTok creators. We have talked. We have used our platform to talk about the strength of you know the strength of Black voices. Right. In every area of media. Right. Right. We've talked about how black creators do not get their just due on social media. And it's sad. As soon as somebody that's non-melanated takes a dance move, hey, it's viral. You know what I'm saying? With with little to no credit to its creator. And so Nicki Minaj knows that. Nicki Minaj is tapped in. And so during Black History Month, she decided to use her platform to open up a forum, a safe space for black creators to really, you know, get a chance to, um, to express themselves, right? Mm-hmm. She invited... It was an open call for to celebrate black creators, but it was an open call. Of course, Nikki is going to bring the stands. So a whole bunch of other non-minority creators crashed the Zoom. Took, I mean, clearly they crashed the Zoom to where some of the black creators that were on the VIP list did not have access, were not able to get in because they filled the Zoom. Mm. Nor did those black creators get a chance for their voices to be strengthened within the session. And so a few creators spoke out afterwards saying like, dang, like here we are again in an attempt to make black spaces, safe spaces for us. Here we are opening our doors. And now we, we don't even have the safety within our own strength because it's over overpopulated by everybody else that's other that's attempting to sit at the table too. Well, you guys own all of these tables and yeah, we may want to sit at y'all's tables too, but dang, when it's time for us to do our own thing we can't seem to do it and it was made to give them the voices i get that and i'm i'm kind of curious why they were wanting to use that voice with Nicki minaj um i see that Nicki has made up with young miami recently you that. know after their little you know young miami went on the breakfast club and said that she was team cardi and I guess from there, Nikki didn't want to work with her. Um, but at the same time, <clears throat> there was something that came out last year that Nikki said about TikTok around to her mixtape, her new mixtape, Beam Me Up Scotty, that came out. Mm-hmm. Can you play that clip for me? So it's not, I know y'all was asking me, where's the cover art and this and that and this, number one, this ain't no TikTok shit. <laughs> This ain't no TikTok thing. You understand? So if this, if she is so against the shade of other artists using TikTok to leverage their streams, mm. why is she the person that is having is have? Why is she the person having this sit down with other creators using that using that platform mm. to create? You know what? This also go back to people trying to be trying to find a way to be in the conversation just to check the box. 
Okay, not saying that that's what you're doing, Nikki, but maybe you are trying to have an understanding of their of their position, and maybe you will have a TikTok song for them. But it seems like you're against that that avenue that other rappers are taking for TikTok. So I'm kind of confused I mean, but here. Maybe she. Aside from the music, maybe she's she was attempting to acknowledge, you know, black creators on TikTok in in their creativity. You know what I'm saying? Like TikTok, you really gotta. It's not for no for the novices. I think that we are really riding a little age gap because you really gotta put some th- some time and some thought and some effort and some production into this thing. Yeah, it is. It is. TikTok will definitely make or break you. So right, we don't know what they what was said or what's going to be said in the next creative room because Nikki did vow to make sure that they had the chance to make up for it but I'm just kind of confused on why but and maybe you know, it's a PR thing not sure and you know what some of the some of the some of the white creators that were like in the space they tried to come out to uh, defend themselves they were like well yeah we just want to speak a seat at the table too we're seeking understanding and, and that's the same thing that I'm that's the same thing that I said in the first episode why do they want to seek understanding from us why are we so willing to give them an open window policy to seek understanding from us when nobody is allowing us that same privilege from them Mm. stop opening these spaces up which it wasn't open in the first place but stop opening these fucking spaces up to white people (laughs) sorry okay coming up next did joe biden send crack pipes to the hood or not we'll get into that and the political update coming up right after this mix. And shout out to all the artists in the mix. If you would like to be featured in the mix, you can go to www.nightmareradioshow.com. Also, if you have an iPhone, because we know we have some Android users out there. Spotify coming soon. Spotify mm. is coming soon, but... Nightmare Radio has curated a playlist that narrates the journey of your love. feelings. Yes, you will start <laughs> off in love. Take it to the climax. Bring you down through the rough parts. And back up to the mountaintop. Yes, she I was trying to really give you took my... out. She just really took it there. <laughs> Damn, I had it. You know what? Let's go to the mix. I was trying to give you Joyce Latell. Oh, okay. Let's go to the mix, <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs> 